This podcast is brought to you by Steed Motor Group, Clare Galway. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, find out more at steedmotorgroup.ie. So I'm delighted to be joined by Liam Dunhu of Cambridge and current uh, Dublin coach, Franny Ford, to look ahead to this week's action in the Galway Intermediate and Senior Hurling Championships over the weekend. Just before we do uh, get into it, Franny, just coming to you first, um, how did you enjoy your role um, with Dublin this year? Um, obviously, a lot of a lot of work at the start. Like, there's, there's a, I suppose a lot that has to go in in terms of getting to know lads and stuff like that, and um, that's that's fairly demanding. I suppose overall, when you look at the year, was it? Did we enjoy it? Absolutely. I mean, I suppose you're you're hitting up the road a couple of times a week with with. Uh, a group of lads that you you know very well, and I suppose you know with with Noel and Michal in particular, the fact that we've worked together for you know a, a good chunk of time at this stage, it makes that whole process easier. Um, uh, look, bottom line is I suppose there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, some some high points during the year, probably a disappointing end to be honest with you, Paul. Um, and that clear just ran through us in in that uh, All Ireland quarter final. So that was a very disappointing end, but. I suppose when you look back at the year as a whole, um, be you know enjoyed it. Yes, absolutely. You know, enjoy the 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 process of of the work that's being done and the, that needs to be done. And I suppose maybe looking forward to giving that another shot next year to see if we can get another step step up the ladder. But as you know, it's a it's a very competitive environment. A very unforgiving environment at, at stages as well and um, while there might have been a lot of talk that the Leinster Championship is, is less competitive I tell you when you're when you're stuck in the middle of it and you're looking for points it's um, it's difficult you're, you know you're looking even looking ahead to next year Wexford will have a new management again and I imagine they'll, they'll get a bit of a, a lift from that uh, in season one Galway will be will be coming as Galway do and Kilkenny are, are going to be you know, the same as they ever are, very, very competitive and very, very difficult to beat. So, yeah, a lot to look forward to, but, um, you know, a lot of work to be done as well to try and get another step up the ladder. Did it feel like on occasions you're kind of nearly away from Galway Ireland, even just thinking how you're probably not getting to go to maybe slow matches you want because probably as a management team, you have to go and see Dublin Club Championship as well. Mm. And as it turns out, actually, even even... This weekend is round three up in Dublin. There and they're like Galway, it's every second week. Uh, and in an ideal world, we'd have Galway hurling and Dublin hurling and up, up the weeks, but of course, they're on the same weekend, so that does make it uh difficult. So, we have to kind of pick and choose which matches we get to go to see in Galway and in Dublin, to be honest, because obviously, you'd still have a huge interest in what's going on here. Um, in the first round, there, I actually only got to, to two games I got to the Turk Moore game and I got to the Cambridge Jordan Moore game. Which was which was a fine game, really competitive game. But um, you know, when you when you know, I suppose so many players, not just from your own club, you know, through being involved in the schools and so on. There's a lot of young fellas that you'd have your eye on as well coming through, and and you just like the, I suppose human nature. You want to follow their progress, see how they're getting on. So, um, always keeping a, a close eye on what's going on in the in the the local championship as well, obviously. Liam, for yourself this year, I know you're, you were saying uh, to me earlier on, you're with the Cambridge uh, Camogie team this year. You're a premier team uh, climber daily as well, but was there, any way, was there any way of you getting involved with the club team this year or were you just going, going, giving your hat to, to Cambridge Camogie team this year? Um, I had a couple of offers early on in the year, but um, probably been 10 years on the circuit. My, my punchline is about more clubs than Tiger Woods. So... Um, I just needed a break basically or I'd be shot at home so um, Brian Carr good buddy of ours he's um, he's uh, he's involved with the senior camogie so his daughter actually did a bit of babysitting for his hair so we got roped in that's how we basically got roped in with the with the camogie women at Clarenbridge so we're out on Sunday in the first round of the championship um, so yeah it'll be a bit of fun Are you enjoying it? No <laughs> I uh, know. Look, it's um, it's it's yeah, it is. It's a bit of it's a bit of crack. Look, uh, the competitive nature comes out in us, um, you know, once you get close to the championship. So obviously, we'll be doing um everything we can to win senior B. 
But um, yeah, we've young side, so looking forward to it, yeah. Just we are to touch on it as this is obviously round two uh, coming coming up now at the weekend. We're just to start with the first game, turn off more on court on Friday evening. Franny, just bring in here on turn off more your own club. Um, obviously, when senior championship comes around, there's always a lot of talk about turn off more. Just from previously being involved, what's that been like with with the bunch of players? Um, to be honest, would you? Paul, I, I think, you know, if there's, if there's talk about what Turlock might or might not do in the championship, I think from a player's point of view and when you're involved, that it doesn't really register, to be honest with you. Um, my own view on it is, is that, you know, you could go through the entire championship, 16 teams in the championship. I, I think they all train equally as hard as, as one another. Um, you know, sometimes you, you can get an opinion maybe And, and you know this could this could apply to any club and maybe dismiss them that you know a certain club isn't uh, they don't train hard enough or they don't want to train they don't want it enough or uh, to my mind every club trains as hard as one another and invariably um, invariably the best team wins the championship uh, there'll be along the way for for. For teams, there will be hard luck stories on occasion and so on, and there's been plenty of them over the years, but by and large, the best team wins the championship. And looking at Turlock, you know, yeah, over the last few years, when they're there, both probably spent a good chunk of time where, uh, looking back, we, we weren't, you know, when I was playing myself, realistically, we weren't competitive enough at all. Uh, didn't have enough quality to to get to a county final um, didn't have enough quality being honest even to get to semi-finals regularly and I think over the last probably five or six years I think you know there, there was a period there from kind of 14 to, to 17 I don't think we got to any semi-final uh, 14 to 18 maybe and then we hit a semi-final in 19 got a county final in 20 Disappointing year, definitely in 21, and then last year beaten in a quarter final by Loch Ray. So, Turlock Moore, they're thereabouts, and you know, well, I think if they if they keep working and keep doing what they're doing, yes, they need a they need a. Hmm? Can they win it this year? Do you feel? Sorry, Paul. Can you say that again? Yeah, yeah. I was just saying. Do, do you feel Turlock Moore can win the Tom Callan Cup this year? They'd be one of five teams that can't win a ball. Could you could you see them winning it, Liam? Yeah, I could, yeah, definitely. Like they're I think they're one of, you know, like Ray Sarsfields, Thomas is obviously Clarence Bridge, Turlock Moore. They'd be my top five picks. So on any given day, I think um any of those teams are capable of beating each other. So yeah, without a shadow of doubt, they're well capable of beat, they're well capable of winning the county title. Yeah, I I think I think that kind of finishes off my point that you know, there's nothing between. I, I still have Thomas at the top, being honest, but I think there's nothing between so many teams after that who, on an, on a given day, you know, could beat one another. Um, but very little in it. And you, yes, any team that's going to make that kind of breakthrough needs a, maybe a lucky break along the way. Lock Ray came very close last year. Probably just didn't get that lucky break. You know, be it in the final or in the replay couple of little bits and pieces here and there could have swung it for them but ultimately Thomas has had that had that know-how and got the job done again and just with that name uh, Turlock Moore's opponents this weekend Gort they lost I suppose heavily you could say in the end to Thomas's opening round but it, it just makes it a huge game now for Gort this weekend because lose really and the they're out of the championship because you, you, you would expect Thomas's to get a win as well this weekend yeah, it's it is it's a, it's a really tough game for Gort. Um, obviously they're missing Aiden Hart who retired this year. Um, so yeah, look, it is they're up against it. Um, Turlock Moore obviously bouncing after their first win. Um, but look, Gort still have a good spine there. Like they've got the the Lallys, Richie Cummins, Aiden Helbert, the Grealishes, um, young Ben O'Donovan, Connor's son chipped in with four points from uh, wing back the last day. So look, they'll be hoping for all these guys to step up. 
at the weekend and maybe spring a surprise. Could, could you see them spring a surprise? No. And um, why not? I just think Turlock Moore, after a comprehensive victory in the first round, I think they'll be going in with huge confidence. And um, I just think overall, they're probably just a better team in a better place at the moment. Garter, a little bit in transition. They have a lot of young players um, building for the future. But um, unfortunately, this weekend, I just think Turlock Moore looked too much for them. Yeah, I think the thing about Gart is, is like, Aiden Hart is Aiden Hart is a massive loss to Gart. Um, you know, he's, he's been a mainstay in the team for, for so long. And, you know, over the last couple of years, they've lost, they've lost, you know, trying to rebuild with young lads like, like Ben O'Donovan and, and Nathan Gill at centre-back. And, you know, that's, that's a big ask. I, I thought Turla Curl really... Form from the first round, you know, you'd have to put Tur We just seem to lose, lost for any day for a sec, hopefully we can get him back in in the next second or two. But like Lemur, it's touching there, Garter brought through young guys, but you could say the same with Turlock Moore, like even you're looking at Killian Trayers the last day of playing against Port Tumna. There there definitely is young guys coming through in the Turlock Moore ranks as well. Yeah, absolutely, sure. They won the under-20 championship last year. Um, you know, the Sarsfields beat us in the semi-final. Um, but, like, I, I've been to quite a few of those games and was really, really impressed with, with the talent that Thurlock Moore have coming through. And, look, you know, the whole county knows that Thurlock Moore are coming with, um, with, with huge underage talent. Like, they won two fail All-Irelands, um, not back-to-back, -back, but there was only a couple of years between them. So definitely they're coming. Um, so yeah, it's no surprise to see uh, to, to see them uh, giving debuts to uh, to younger players. And what what would you what, what would you have to say, Franny, about these younger players? I suppose Killian Trayers was someone who has been highlighted for an up and coming future, but to come through particularly because I know he was kind of down for the intermediates as well, but played with the seniors first day out. Yeah, uh, Killian is a uh, first of all he's. He's a fantastic hurler. Um, you know, just out of minor rank. So the way it's gone, he... there's no doubt in Killian that he has. What I see in Killian more than anything else is that he has a fantastic hurling brain. Um, probably more naturally a, a, a defender or a halfback. Um. But you know he certainly is one one for the future. But there's other lads who probably made debuts last. Yeah, I think that's just Franny's connection. Um, he seems to. Be... And he's just been cues because he's talking about Tarlick Moore. <laughs> Sorry, lads. I don't know. If it's... <laughs> my my Wi-Fi is coming and going here. I'm afraid. Yeah, no, we'll see what we can do there. Hopefully, it'll um, stay up. But uh, we were we were mentioning there, Liam. Um, Turlock will have um, probably more than likely uh, too much in that one. Poor Tumna, they lost heavily opening day out. They're coming up against Thomas's this weekend, and it does really feel like it's going to be a tough challenge for for Poor Tumna this weekend. Yeah, definitely. Again, they're a bit like Gort. They're hugely in transition. Um, you know, they lost Andy Smith. Um, the Ron Amara has taken the year out. Um, Jack Canning was missing the last day. So, you know, again, it's not easy. Uh, fill, fill, uh, fill gaps with the players of that calibre. Um, so, yeah, they're really up against it, to be honest. Is, is there anything they can cling on to this weekend? Or how do they try and get up for against the county champions this weekend? <sighs> It's look, uh, you know, there's two teams, so obviously they have a chance. Um, it's all about attitude, but no, just trying to concentrate on their performance, uh, controlling what they can control in the game, their work rate, their attitude, their use of the ball. Um, and you're kind of hoping then the Thomases, you know, don't bring their A game. With Thomases, you could say the loss of David Burke was significant, but then to get a player like David Cherry back and in the last yeah. day against Gort, like they, you were maybe just 
question where to be at because obviously it was their first game without David Burton quite a while, but they looked really, really impressive against Gort. Yeah, I suppose the 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 most amazing thing about Thomas is is just their appetite every year, every game they come out, they just seem to hit a level of eight out of ten in their performance, and it's just you can't but admire it. It's um, their consistency is incredible. You know, uh, their pride in that jersey every time they put it on. It's 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 just uh, you'd be really envious of it to be honest. You know, it's they're just a they're a very special club, and you know, like they're completely maximising what they're getting out of that group of players. It is still at number one for you, Franny. Yeah, Franny just still seems to be gone there. Um, but I presume they're still number one, like in the pecking order for you, Liam. Um, they are. I, I do think that the pack is closing a little bit. You know, Lock Ray took them to a replay last year. Um, we had them two years ago in the county final of Turlock Moore the year before that. Um, you know, they still seem to be able to pull it out. But look, Davy Burke is going to be a huge loss this year. Bernard Burke hasn't come back yet into the fold. Um, not sure whether he's going to join them or not for the rest of the season. Um, look, I, I, you know, would I be surprised if Lock Ray, Turlock Moore, um, Sarsfields caught them in the county final or semi final? No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be overly surprised, but. Um, they're still the team to beat. Hopefully now we can get Franny's connection as well back in, in a few minutes. He just seems to be having a few difficulties there. But uh, how do you build that kind of know-how and experience of what that club has built? Because it seems what well, you're talking about them, Clambridge and Turnock Moore and them teams, that's what they're trying to build and to get to that level. But how difficult is it to get to that level? It's it's hugely difficult. I suppose... Um, the most significant step is the first county title. Once you win that, you know, it's like um, it's like a surge through the whole club. So the underage structure starts to thrive. Um, you know, the finances start to come in. You get a huge community, or a huge parish community spirit. And then all of a sudden, your players are playing with much more confidence. And, you know, sometimes you go up on the pitch and you've games won before you, the ball is even thrown in because you're playing the county champions. And, you know, that is just snowballed for Thomas's for the last six, seven, eight years. They've just been incredible and, you know, their consistency, their their attitude, their professionalism, it's just, honestly, they're, they're a credit. How haven't they taken the eye off the ball? Sorry? How haven't they taken the eye off the ball? How are they still able to remain this focused? Honestly, I think it's just their humility. You know, they, you know, you meet them on the street and they're, they're, um, they're just so down to earth. You know, all the fundraisers that they do, it's the players that are driving it. You know, they have a fundraiser on there at the moment and you, you get 10 text messages from the players looking for support. You know, they're just, they're just incredible. They're just, you know, one life, one club ethos. That's them. They sum up that, you know, they're just, honestly, a huge admiration for them. I, I don't know if we have Franny back now or not, but hopefully you might be able to hear us. But like, we're, we're just talking about Thomas is there. Franny and even Liam's just referenced the humility and the know-how and the experience is probably what other teams are trying to get to. But do they still have all those attributes for you? If, if there seems to be an issue there just with the um, Franny's Wi-Fi. But, like, did... Sorry, no, Paul. Sorry, Technical issues here, my end. Apologies. <laughs> You're grand. No, we were just talking about Thomas's. Um, they're obviously still at number one for a lot, a lot of teams, but even Liam was talking there about humility and the know-how and the experience they've built, and that's what that's what all the other teams are trying to get to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Look, I was I was reflecting on something there last week that um, you know, Lockray obviously Lockray beat Turlock more last year, and and. I suppose my looking ahead to the rest of the championship after that, the thing I had about Lagre is that you know it would have been very disappointing from a Turlock Moore point of view if if Lagre then subsequently didn't back that up, right? So they did. Like to be fair to them, they went and beat um, Clarence Bridge in the semi final, and then put in a huge performance in the county final. Um, got the draw the first day, took it to a replay, and just thinking, you know. In spite of all that, you know, good performance and a lot of really good hurling, 
still didn't manage to beat Thomas's. Um, and then when I was thinking about it, that that was a Thomas's team, you know, in the replay without David Sherry, without James Regan, and without Shane Cooney. You know, like that was a phenomenal achievement. Um, so can they this year? I suppose look the big one is Davy, obviously. But if they were to get those three lads absolutely, you know, back to a hundred percent, um, would that compensate for the for the absence of David Burke? You have to say that it, it probably would, even though Davy's probably the best I have ever seen in terms of his on field management of the game, uh, recognizing like when best to, player ever. Um, uh, best player ever from the point of view of of on field decision making. You know, his his sense of positioning and recognizing what's needed in terms of that defensive role as a midfielder on occasion, and then sometimes spotting the opportunity where he breaks into the half forward line and pops up with two or three points. That's the kind of stuff, to be honest with you, Paul, that that, that you can't really coach anyone. That Davy, that that was just something that Davy he has, and it's it's comes from his own um I don't know, his own love of hurling number one, but it's just obviously been being reared on it, I suppose, is what I would say, is that he just has that innate ability. So huge, huge loss, but Thomas has shown in the past that they're capable of coming through without without key players. Going back to, you know, when Finton Burke did his cruise shit, I know he made it back for a county final, but um they have Shane Cooney, they've they've been able to manage without key players and put in huge performances. So they definitely wouldn't want that to be the factor that you know that stops them this year. Um in fact, you know, not having Davy might even drive them on to uh, be even more committed to the cause. Um they're they're a phenomenal team and you couldn't but absolutely admire what they've done and what they continue to do. I suppose if they were to win six in a row this year, Franny, without David, it probably tops all the achievements they've achieved. Uh, but to be fair, yeah, it would. Absolutely it would. I mean, six in a row of itself would be phenomenal if, if they can get there without without Davy. And to be honest with you, knowing Davy as I do, I wouldn't be totally ruling him out um for, for, for a late season comeback. Uh, and I know that's that's probably a big ask given the time frame involved, but Davy is so meticulous in everything that he does, and I've no doubt that his rehab will be will be no different. So uh, you just never know. But look, there's a there's a lot of hurling to be done between now and then. Uh, even looking back at last year, I thought last year that they there was a stage where they were uh, a little bit shaky. Um, you know, Turlock Moore beat them in a group game, and then Claren Bridge. I think they went. You know, fair, had a fairly substantial lead in that game, even at half time. And I, I thought that was maybe an opportunity that could have forced Thomas's last year down the route of a, of a preliminary quarter final. And I think a more seasoned team like Thomas's don't need extra games; they want to go the direct route if at all possible. So um, that's why I think maybe in potentially in round three, the game between Turlock and Thomas's could be important in terms of who tops the group or whatever. Now, you know, that's no disrespect; like they both have big games ahead of them this weekend. But um, even if 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 Turlock were to lose to Gart and turn around to beat Thomas's, they could potentially still top the group. You know what I mean? So I think that's that's going to be an important that's going to be an important game in terms of you know the outcome of that group. And, and I do think topping your group does give you an advantage. You're going not alone getting straight to the quarter final, but it eliminates a potential banana skin and eliminates possibly a more difficult draw in a quarter final as well. It does really feel like even in all the groups this weekend in senior, they're really shaping up because you have teams coming up against who've lost each other and then teams who haven't got a win at all. So it, it's it's hugely vital. Liam, a, a big game um, that you'd be interested in this weekend, your former club, Climber Day, one of them up against your own club, Clarenbridge. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Um, Clarenbridge, probably a little bit lucky against... Um, Against Ormore Murray, um, Mark Hindy's three goals, three fantastic assists from Keen Salmon. Um, we just, Hurling Patches got, just got over the line. So 
going into the game, I would have bit your hand off for any sort of a win. Local derby against Ormore. We played them four years ago in Pear Stadium and and Ormore Mary beat us. So we were under no illusions about the size of the task. Um, and honestly, that's the way it played out. It was a re- as Franny alluded to earlier, it was a really good game. Um, but uh, yeah, delighted to get the result. So Climber Daly then after beating Tommy Larkins, obviously they'll be um they'll be coming in full of confidence. So it should be a really good game. What has Niall Moran brought to Cambridge? Um what has he brought to Clarem Bridge? Um there's a huge energy. Um we'd be training, uh we'd be training up in the small pitch, the boys are on the senior pitch, and just everything is so positive. Uh, everything's energetic. Uh, the boys really seem to be enjoying it and responding tonight. So, yeah, very happy with them. Brenda, you would have seen Cambridge opening day out, um, as you mentioned there against Ormore. What, what did you make of them? Um, to be honest with you, a little bit of a mixed bag, Paul, in that at times they were they were really excellent at times in the first half. I mean, that that... I suppose that duo, Keen Salmon and, and Mark Kennedy. Mark Mark is a f- an absolutely fantastic hurler. Like he's 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 a brilliant finisher. Um and then Keen was was probably the perfect foil for him, you know, set him up, put him through with hand passes and so on. Um good movement, good all round play. And I'd probably be a little bit critical of, of Cambridge in the second half, but there's a part to be then wondering, you know, they did go into a commanding position and was was some little part of them do they think you know the job was done and just struggled to get going again um to be fair to Orn Moore and I, I I've this has been a, a trade of Orn Moore over the last you know last year in particular and this year they're a team who strike me as being very very honest uh it's the, f- the first word that I would describe that I would use to describe them we play them Probably more played them in, in played them in league last year, we played them in the challenge match, and then we ended up playing them in the prelim quarter final last year. Um they, they're a, a difficult team to play against because they because they, they don't give up and they keep going right to the finish. And I think they in the second half, to be fair to them, haven't had struggles in the first half, particularly in the full back line, obviously. Um they really stuck at it. Yes, they missed a penalty, came again. Had opportunities to to you know really put Clarenbridge to the pin of their collar, but Clarenbridge, to their credit, did find enough to steady the ship, and in a way that could be of huge value to Clarenbridge for this weekend. Uh, the fact that yeah, they, I think the penalty was huge for any, wasn't it? Uh, it was, yeah, it, it it was. It was it was a great opportunity. Now there was still a bit of time left. Um, it would have been a further test to Clarence Bridge maybe if they had got it to see if then, well, now you've got a real test. I, I, I thought, to be fair to Clarence Bridge, as I said, Liam, I think they did respond, maybe not in the free-flowing hurling kind of way, but they did get the job done. And very often these games are about getting the job done. And I think in some respects, it was nearly the ideal scenario of Clarence Bridge in that they... You know, they got a little bit of a of a warning that you've got to keep playing all the way through. And yet they still came out with the result. So yeah. looking ahead to the, the Clem Daly game, I think that's... I think if you put yourself in David Ford's shoes, I think he had enough of a stick to beat them with, but he still had two points in the bag. So, you know, kind of happy days from that point of view. Yeah, no, totally agree. That's the thing. It's, it's probably what you want to see, Liam. It's probably just a bit more consistency over the 60 minutes from Cambridge, but Clyro Daly are, are one of these teams who like to cause an upset as well, and and, and you know more well than anyone that they they yeah. relish this weekend. Oh, absolutely they will, yeah. Like, you know, Clarebridge are going to be going into that game as favourites, and um, like, it's it's a perfect scenario for Clyro Daly. They can go out and have a free lash at it, you know, um, Brian Burke, 14 points the last day, David Concannon at 6, Brian Concannon at 11, and young Luke Linsky in the corner scoring four points the last day. Like they're sprinkled with some exceptional hurlers. And um, they have a lot of young lads as well, so there's a lot of pace in the team. Paul Concannon at full back is is as good as what's out there in club hurling at full back. Um so yeah, look, we're under no illusions. Um, like whoever wins will more than like, well, should top the group, you'd imagine, um, on the head to head basis. So yeah, look, it's as as Franny said there, like 
you know, Davy Ford will be happy. We didn't play exceptionally well against Warren Moore, but got the job done. Um, so we'll be going in with a little bit more confidence and uh, hopefully we get a, a better performance over 60, 65 minutes the next day. Just in the other game in uh, Group 1 as well, it's it's Warren Moore Mary. They're probably impressive at, at, st- at stages against uh, Cambridge. Coming up against Tommy Larkins uh, this weekend, it's not to disrespect Phil and to Tommy Larkin's lean, but it's just their injuries at the minute. You don't, you really feel like they're up against it in this group without Rona Murphy and Jason Flynn. Yeah, and Colin Flynn gone travelling as well. Like he's yeah. a huge loss. He got a lot of scores from him um, previously. Look, the the one thing, yeah, the one thing about Tommy Larkins is like if you look at them for the last four or five years, they've always they've always managed to come out of senior eight groups. Like even when there was four or five teams in the group. You always manage to top a group or come second. So, to be honest, you can write them off at your pearl. I still think, I still think they're they're a very pro parish. And would I be surprised if they beat or more? I wouldn't. To be honest with you, you know, um, they're a very seasoned senior campaign team. Like so, you know, they it, it should be a good game. Just going back to or more again. I just thought, I th- I thought coming down the stretch, their decision making, their shot selection, let them down considerably against Karen Bridge. So if they can sharpen up in that, you know, it should um it should stand them in good stead for the for the second round. But yeah. I don't I think, think it's a formality good, for point. Huh? That's a good point. Or more did yeah. And when the game was in the metal pot, they did hit a good number of wise, like when they were dominant and and you know there was the, as I said earlier there there was opportunities for them. Um for Tommy's it it's it's uh, it, it's it's disappointing really because they have been on an upward tra- trajectory over the last, you know, three, four years, been consistently really competitive, as you said. Now, you know, even when you talk to the management and talk to Noel or Cyril or whatever, um, they, they, you know, they have operated off a tight panel. And then when you lose, the you say really- three best players or certainly three of their best players, um, it does make things really, really difficult. And, and, you know, it, it's it's probably a little bit demoralizing for them because you know Jason would be their their leader, and then Ron has really you know stepped up over the last number of years, and Colm has been really consistent over over going back eight nine years at this stage. Um, it's very difficult for for them, but the one thing you can be certain of they they will throw everything at this one. They, yeah, no. In spite of being down players, they would have still hoped that that they might have got the result against Calamard Daly and. They'll probably know their season is on the line, so they will throw everything at at this one this weekend. Um, but then on the other hand, I would say the likes for Owen Moore, the likes of Rory Burke with the with that senior game, senior championship game under his belt now. Um, you know, a really promising player. I I, I just think Owen Moore showed enough the last day, and I think they can improve on that. Albeit that Niall Burke might be a little bit doubtful, I, I have a feeling, but um I just think that it'll be a tough one for Tommy's to be fair. It just seems to me to be a little bit too much for them to overcome. Um, Niall Burke came off tumor after the penalty the last day with a hamstring injury. Like, so it'll be interesting to see whether he's back or not. Mm-hmm. So obviously if he's not, he'd be a huge loss for um, Ormer Murray. Um, I thought Anthony Keady actually showed real promise the last day as well. My yeah. God, his pace is electrified. Yeah. So it is. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Benny, Benny, you were fast, but um, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) No, different level. Uh, No, uh, guy who's really progressing in my book. Fantastic attitude. Yeah, Uh, always trying to improve. Um, You know, and they part of that younger brigade that's coming for more. more, um, And I think we'll probably see more more quality step into that or more team over the next couple of years. Certainly as a club, I would say, you know, they're very much on the up. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and, and who knows, like, they, it's hard to believe now that they only came up from intermediate in whatever it was. Was it, was it 18 they won the intermediate yeah. or was it 19? Four years ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, went up senior A, yes, went back down again, but now back up in senior A again. And, um Really, really physically physically strong team as well. The work has been, been put in there. It's fairly obvious. So um, definitely a team on the up. And you know, they're a team I would 
have expected to qualify, to be honest with you. And now this game, the weekend, probably becomes a key game for them. Um, yeah. You know, pretty much a must win now with one defeat under the belt. Yeah, no, absolutely. Just on to Group 3 then, we've obviously looked at Group 1 and Group 2, but just on that as well, like Gordon Moore and Tommy Erkins, um, both of them fighting for their lives this weekend, really. Um, so winner takes all there, really, and puts himself back in the hunt to advance out of the group. Just in Group 2, uh, Keith Kalyron and Mike Cullen, it's, it's huge for both of them to get a win here. Um, they'll both really be targeting it, but it's considerably huge when you think my Cullen well beaten um opening day out against Lock Ray, how are they gonna to react to that? Kill Kniron came up short against Cap Tagel and they have the daunting task of Lock Ray in their final game. So like, both but like sim it's it's similar to I suppose if you have lost your first game to it's huge for both of these teams now to try and I suppose react and get themselves back into the championship league. Well, look, you're 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 either getting into third place in the group, or you're going to be you're going to be steering down the barrel of relegation. Um, yeah. So obviously, this is what it boils down to. You know, you lose your first game, your second game then becomes a effectively a county final. Um, my column were missing. Um, was McDonough out the last day? Yeah, I think Finn McDonough yeah. was injured and. Like Ian was yeah. crucial last year, so he's not. I think I'm not sure. Colin Colin Cunningham was was in America. I think I don't know. Is he back either? So I don't know. I know they were in the in the lead up to it. They were certainly missing a few players, and and again, you know, I mentioned that in, in relation to Tommy Larkins. I think for my Colin, that's that's a huge thing. Um, on the face of it, I suppose after round one, you would say that you know Kilkenarn's performance was better. Yeah, but then again, my gun were up against Loch Ray, and I I probably put Loch Ray as as the top team in that group. Being the Canarin, the Canarin did put up twenty three points, didn't they? They did, yeah. But if you if you if you take a longer term view on that, like my Cullen's form from last year, albeit you know that they were in senior B and 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 Kilkenarn were in senior A last year, but my Cullen's form from last year was better, and they got a. They got great momentum coming from Senior B last year. Um, you know, didn't they beat Mellows? I'm right in saying in, in up in up in Ballinus Low, or was that a draw? Yeah. Got a, beat Mellows, yeah, by point. Yeah. yeah, they beat Mellows. Um, and then ultimately went out to Cappy in 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 a prelim quarterfinal, I think it was. But their form last year was certainly better. Than, than we'll say first round this year. But so it depends. Can they park the Loch Ray game and and try and get back to some of that flow that they had last year? The likes of Keane Folan was re really effective last year. Can they get you know some of those injured players on the pitch? Uh, that's it's a game that's really difficult to call. They can learn of some very good up and coming lads. And again, you know, probably a lot of lads on the kind of 19, 20, 21 bracket. Uh, and from that point of view, they'd be so anxious to, I suppose, stay in senior A with those lads coming through. And and Kick Learner Club with with more young lads coming through over the next next number of years. So no more than or more, I think they they will have players coming through who have a lot to offer at senior hurling level. So, um, absolutely massive game, and it's one I'd be very reluctant to call, to be honest with you. Obviously, John Hardy over my Connell as well. Like, what manager? Mm -hmm. What other manager would you want on the sideline? Experience yeah. he has, well for Yeah, huge, huge, yeah. And, and you know, seems to that seems to be something that has worked really well. John, John certainly has, I think, enjoyed his time in in my Cullen, and um, yeah. I know they've, you know, great time for the work that he has put in with them. Uh, so a lot of a lot of really good work going on there, and I suppose that it all goes on the line this weekend. Is 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 the way I would see that one. Especially given the other two teams in the group, you know, with with with, uh, with Cappy having the win over Kilkenarn already, you, you could be looking at Cappy Mike Cullen in the last game, trying to get you know from Mike Cullen's point of view, trying to get something out of that, knowing that Cappy beat them last year in knockouts. Um, that would be difficult. So again, I think it's it's uh, it's it's a kind of a winner take all game for me this weekend. That one. Oh, this is Paul. This is an issue I would have with the championship, like. You know, you're six, seven months training and here you are second round of the championship and you're facing, if you lose, you're facing relegation straight away. Like it's it's just not conducive for, 
I don't know, long-term development. Like, how do you sell that to young lads? You know, uh, six, seven months training and sign up for for 50% of the hurlers this year are going to get four matches. You know, one of those is going to be preliminary quarterfinal or a relegation match. Like, it's just, I don't know. I think so. it's something that really needs to be looked at. Mm, there's no easy answer. Like, the only thing I'd say on that, Liam, is that there's... There's no easy answer. I, I like I know the groups of six. I was just thinking about that actually before coming on. You know, in a in a in a group of six last year, uh, all in the one group you had you had Thomas's, Torlick Moore, Clarence Bridge, Sarsfields, you know, uh Climber Daly and Castle Gar. So for any developing player who made it onto his club senior team, he was going to get five serious games. Um which would you rather like? Would you rather be playing like? Would you rather more games? I know they're tougher games if, mm. if you're in that scenario, that group. Or do you want to be in a situation where you're playing the second round of the championship and you lose your? Fit? Yeah, you're into relegation. Like yeah, yeah. You know your last yeah, it's, game. It's difficult. It? Like it is. It is really difficult. Uh, I, I I think you know more games are great, but then you run into scenario where you know you have your December county final or whatever it is. So yeah, I suppose you you can't. Can't please all the people all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's very hard to get that. It's very hard to get that balance right. I think from a player development point of view, you, you want more games. Um, but look, this is the first year of this setup, so I think maybe it's something that, that you kind of have to reflect on when the whole thing is over. But yeah, you know, I think everyone's guaranteed. Everyone's guaranteed four games. It just so happens that your your fourth one might be the start of your relegation playoff. You know that's that's the unfortunate uh, consequence of the sixteen team championship, and it you know wasn't something that Galway voted for. Let's be honest about it; it was kind of imposed on us. Um, but look, it is what it is. It's it's a, it's very competitive. It's probably led led to a senior B that's also very competitive, and that'll be that's one I'm interested in to see. You know, I'd love to talk to, to the teams or the players involved in that senior B championship when, when it's all over um, to see kind of what they got out of it. Obviously, there's no All Ireland series to go on to. One team going up, one team going down. So that's 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 an interesting one for me as well. With just the eight teams in the senior B, see how that that works out. I think it's hugely positive in senior B though that you've a cup, you've a final at the end of it. You know, so yeah. for clubs that haven't won anything in years, you know, to to get that experience, it can only be good for a parish. You know, and drive things on. Yeah, true, true. Plus the uh, other game in the senior group three, it's Lockery coming up against Cap Tagel. It's the repeat of this year's league final. Liam, probably the game of the weekend here. Yeah, definitely. Um, as you said, repeat of the league final. Um, Lockery, Lockery, you know, will probably be on a mission this year um, to get back to a county final again. Um, uh, the very comprehensive first round victory. Look, they're they're a club going the right direction. Um, I think they'll have too much for um for Cappy at the weekend. Um, but yeah, look, it'll be a, it, it should be a cracking game. Mm. Cappy, a team to be fair to them as well. Like they've got a good win and in, in under their belt in round one. But again, they're a team in transition. Um, to my mind, Cappy Cappy at their best was, you know, go back a couple of years ago, you know, Damien Joyce is probably the, the 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 leader of that team. Yeah. Um on the pitch and spiritually and every every other way, I think. Um at their very best. Since that, like Paul Claffey went away for a period. He was back last year. Now I, I, I believe he's he's not around this year. Dan Nevin's not around. Like they're they're big losses to to a club like Happy, and I know they've got young players coming in but to me that just it's a little bit too much to overcome uh, the loss of players like that um, so I think Lock Ray with the form they've shown consistently now like this they were probably somewhat unlucky to be knocked out of the championship in, in 21 Um and then, you know, a really good run last year. They'll be absolutely determined to, to get back to a county final this year. I think they're showing all the right signs. They have three leagues, one in a row. They saw off Cappy. You no, know, Cappy put it up to them in the league final. But, you know, they, they did score they score five goals that day, I think. Um, I, I 
I would expect Lockray to win this one. Also, a local derby. I don't think Lockray will 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 want for any kind of motivation on this one. Um, and I think it's it'll be their first opportunity to maybe signal their intent for for the year ahead. Um, but Cappy, you know, how many times have maybe we written off? I won't say written off Cappy, but you know they've they've consistently been at the top table for the last six years. You know, even even a relatively poor year for Cappy over the last five or six is, is still getting to a quarter final. You know, four right. semis in a row and whatever. Um, that's that's remarkable consistency. Um, so you can be certain that, albeit with some younger players thrown in there now, that they'll be giving it everything. And and you know they have their own kind of style of play. Um, they always they're a team who always know what they're about as as a collective. Um, it's just that I don't think they'll have enough experience on the pitch this time round to really put it up to Lockray. And Liam Lockray are side that are building depth, like you're even without one or two, like in particular missing Martin McManus in that game against yeah. Mike Collin. There's even, there's even lads who are up in, in that Lockray team from their first year out of minor into that team. Like they're, they're, they're building serious depth there. Yeah, they were missing Darren Shocks as well. Um, yeah, even look, Garage Lucknan has brought huge stability even in goals for them. Um, or actually really raised him was a very good keeper. Um, Shane Morgan at six, Neil Carey, Jamie Ryan. Look, they have a great they have a great mix of experience in youth. And um, like as Franny said there, they're coming off three league titles. Um a really comprehensive first round victory. So they're doing everything right. Um and like uh, honestly. You know, you'd be expecting a huge year out of them again this year. Is this the time for them now to send out another statement, like against their neighbours, against the biggest challengers in the group? It is, yeah, without a doubt. Like, um, you know, it is. Like, you realistically, to win a championship, what are they going to play? Six games, you know, so it's not a huge, it's not a huge season. So there's no reason why you don't go out and try and win all your games, you know? Um, yeah, well, this, so, yeah. this this one gets like a win for Lockery with no disrespect to any other team. Uh, this potentially gets them straight to the quarter final. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Because they have the they have the good score difference from the first game. If if they beat Cappy, they're on four points. You know, even if there was a huge upset in the last game, which I don't expect there would be, but this is their ticket to straight to the quarter final, and they can as a as a management team, they can nearly start planning for. Quarterfinals are in six six weeks from this weekend. They can actually start, you know, maybe like get a little block of training in there that will stand them in six weeks' time or whatever it might be. Um, maybe take care of a couple of injuries to make sure everyone's one hundred percent come quarterfinal time. There, there, there's a few small little things like that that this would give them the opportunity to do, and could set them in, you know, on a really good footing for for six weeks' time. So that. That won't be lost on the Lockeray management, I'd say, and I, I couldn't see them taking their eye off the ball from that point of view. Um, they've been very professional in everything they've done over the last couple of years. So, you know, I, I, I would expect them to be professional this weekend and and get the job done, albeit that it's never easy to beat Cappy, but I would expect them to get the job done. You expect them to too, Liam? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, Lockeray all the way. And actually, I didn't give you my prediction for uh, Claire Bridge and Claire Daly. <laughs> yeah, where, where do you sit on that one? Obviously, a Claire Bridge win. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure there, I'd say, where are you? <laughs> but uh, just in Group 4, there's two games um, this weekend as well. Uh, Sarsfields, Castlegar, Ardra and Crowell. Um, Franny, I don't know if you hear a clip uh, on the last podcast I did. About, about Castlegar. <laughs> yeah, um, I did. What did you think when you heard that? Um, what was that? Uh, being honest, Paul, I, I, I thought it was I thought it was very harsh. I thought okay. it was very harsh, and, and I made the point there earlier. Um, to my mind, every team goes out, and 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 the lads who are like, if lads don't want to play senior hurling, they're not going to put in the effort that's that's required to compete at this at at this level. Um. And I also said that invariably the, the the best team you know wins the county final or the best team call. I I think there was I think there was a period of three or four years ago where Castlegar consistently put it up to teams like 
they really, I think maybe he's a, oh, I have to think now. I think it might have been, was it? Kevin Cooney's 21 years beat through with that. Yeah, yeah. But they had, they had pretty much Thomas's beaten in the first beaten, round that, yeah. that year as well. Um, okay. And Thomas has got a late goal. Kevin Cooney got a late goal. Um, and sometimes you can, as a club, you can you can push and push, and I, and then didn't get a couple of breaks, and maybe that 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 form dips. Maybe you you like sometimes what can be interpreted as as a lack of spirit or a lack of maybe desire can actually be a lack of confidence. Um, so uh, you know I I don't really subscribe to that idea that you know that there's that there's something missing in in the in the personality of the team or whatever sometimes you just for some teams it's just that look we're at a level and we're 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 not at the level required in terms of our skill or whatever it might be or our physicality whatever um i don't think it's a lack of spirit or a lack of effort uh that's that's my honest opinion on it um i we played them. We played them last year in the stadium, and uh, it finished up. I know it was at twenty four points to one twenty four, and it was a fantastic game of hurling. Like Castlegar were absolutely brilliant on the day. Like they they lacked absolutely nothing. Like it was just a thrilling game of hurling, and on the day it would have been a shame if any team lost it. Like you know, yeah. they're they're. Uh, I think they're a bit unlucky, you know, to be honest. The last couple of seasons. Mm. Yeah, I, I I would agree, and. I think they sometimes you 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 go through a couple of years where you put in an absolutely massive effort and and maybe you don't get rewarded for that and and look it's hard and you have to keep going back and keep going back and uh, at the end of the day only only one team finishes the, the championship happy I suppose that's the only way yeah. to look at it and you know within that there's varying degrees of of disappointment or whatever um but sometimes it can be it can be hard to to keep going back to the well um and I I think Castlegar have just been one of those teams. They've consistently been in senior A, but I suppose consistently haven't haven't qualified. And you know, you could blame X, Y, and Z, but you know, I I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't blame the players on an individual basis. Is is that kind of is that the kind of is that the level where they're a good solid senior A team, but not a top six senior A team, which yeah. is. Which I think is is fair enough, and you know if you're from Castle Gary, you say, "Well, geez, no, we see ourselves as a top sixty. Well, then then you've got to make sure you're you're getting there consistently. I think that's that's the bottom line. Um, they, I think they'd have been stung by the first round defeat to to Ardrahan. Um, they only went up in the second half, like midway through. Yeah, and and but it doesn't get any easier, which was what we just spoke about in terms yeah. of when you're going into round two on the back of a defeat. Well, it's 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 pressure on, you know, and, and they really need a performance this weekend now. Yeah, as we say, saying nearly, it doesn't get any easier. They're coming up against Sarsfields, who obviously played at the weekend, just gone by there, and they didn't have it all their own way against Cromwell. Cromwell really did put it up to them at the weekend, but they got over the line now, and even with that, there's, there's probably a bit of momentum um, coming in behind Sarsfields now after particularly only playing last weekend. Yeah, no, definitely, and like. You know, it must have been a really tough, um, tough game for Sarsfields after after Jimmy's passing. So huge credit to them for lifting themselves and getting that performance. And uh, I wasn't at the game now, but apparently Kevin and Joe Cooney were were unhurlable on the day. So yeah, you couldn't but admire them for that for that performance. Um, but look, like for me, Sarsfields are our top six team. Um, I I think they'll have too much for Castlegar. Can you see Castlegar causing an upset at all? Um, it, um, I'd expect it to be a very competitive game. You know, would I be? I, I wouldn't mind to see Castlegar causing an upset. Absolutely not. Are they capable of doing it? Yes, they are. But um, I just think Sarsfields are more seasoned, more seasoned team, and uh, I, I just think they're more balanced. And with the two Coonies, you know, they've especially with Kevin, the form one seven the last day. Um, you know. They just have more scoring threats, basically, compared to um, compared to Castlegar. Yeah, I think that word you use, balance, is the thing for me as well. Just Sarsfields have they have a lot of options, really. They have a mm. lot of options. They've they've got good forwards. Um, 
when they when they were in flow last year, I thought they were really good at times. There was a period of the game against Clarenbridge up in Ballinas Lowley, if you remember, where they were very good. Now both teams had their moments in that game. It was, yeah. it was a great game. Uh, we played them. They dom- dominated us in the first half. We came back at them in the second half. They they probably. I'd say they're probably very disappointed with the way last year ended for them in that, you know, their, their performance in the, in the semi-final they'd have been very disappointed with. Uh, and I think this year that they, they would have, they'd want to atone for that. Um, uh, I, To my mind, they're a team who are, who are right up there. When you talk about the top kind of five or six, you're talking, obviously you're talking about Thomas's and then, you know, everyone will probably mention Claren Bridge, Lachray and Turlock and, you know, they're the three three teams who've lost the last three county finals to, to Thomas's. Saracens haven't been in, you know, a county final in that period, but they've been there thereabouts all the time. Um and are certainly in that same, they're definitely in that same bracket to my mind. Uh, I think they would really target topping this group, like we mentioned that in relation to um in relation to Loch Ray, you know. Am I John? They, they could have one foot in the quarterfinal now. The you know after this weekend, um, and I think that's that'll be their attitude towards it. And then they start prep. Um, I I just think with, I think they're a club who, who who are who are driven this year. Um, I I think. Well, Friendly, there's, there's a tradition there with Sarsfield as well. Like, mm. you know, they, they they just expect to win county titles. Yeah. You know, they're probably. Am I missing a team here? But are they the are they the last other than Thomas's county champions? Uh, you're missing Mellows, yeah. Oh, Mellows, Mellows. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah 2015, and like they've, you know, they still have the, the the core of that 2015 team, and then you have a lot of their their lads from last year's under 20s, the likes of Alex Knair and you know Paddy McCarthy will be coming in there, I'd imagine. Um, when I've seen uh, young Darren Murphy was very good last year, you know I, I and and you know with a year under their belt for some of those lads, um, you could see them having more of an impact this year. Um, so yeah, I I think it's a big ask for Castle Gar, and I, and and I think that's you know going back to your earlier question, Paul. That's not that's not a criticism of Castle Gar. I just think they're coming they're coming to play a team who are who are a bit ahead of them at the moment. Um, yeah. and and you know Castlegar absolutely throwing everything at it with 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 the perfect spirit and and, and you know not to knock what Kevin had to say but um, <laughs> I I still think that would be a huge challenge for them. It's as sim- simple as that. Just in the final game then the senior championship, um, Ardran and Liam looked like one of these teams who could really cause an upset along the way this year. They're coming up against Crockwell, who uh, came up short against um, Sarsfields last weekend. It does really feel like a, a big, a, a big victory here, either for Ardran or Crockwell, could really cement them a second spot in this group. Yeah, it's a it's a great opportunity for Ardran, a local derby. Um, I I was at the I was at the um Ardran Castlegar game, and we under no no illusions like Ardran fully deserved to win that game. Um, played really well. Obviously, Johnny Glynn on the edge of the square. Um, I don't know how you defend him in Club Ireland. He was just absolutely incredible in the first half in particular. Um, but look, you've got the two Fahys there, Lean Ford, um, managed by Sil Dolan. They're well organised and like really, really very committed on the day. And as I said, great value for the win. Um, Crowell obviously coming off, um, coming off the defeat to Sarsfields. So, you know, they're a little bit in transition as well. Lost a lot of players over the last couple of years. So they'll be really looking to the likes of Tom Mannan, Tiernan Lean, a couple of scores the last day. Um, I, I'd actually be, I'd be plugging for Ardran on this one. Hmm. I, I think this is a, not sure they're going to have Johnny this weekend. That's the only yeah, thing I'd say on that, Lean. So. Could have told me that before I started, Franny. Yeah, <laughs> I said I'd let you, I'd let you <laughs> hang yourself there first. Um, <laughs> oh my God. No, I think Johnny's not available for this one, and I think I think our, look as far as I'm aware that, that Abraham were aware of that from kind of from the start, which obviously is is a game changer. Um, and you know, Crowell, Crowell have a lot of season campaigners as well. It, it's a very difficult one to call because obviously Abraham now will have got huge momentum from that, like yeah. up from up from senior B, 
Um, it seems like one of these games that could be a draw over the weekend. I, I would see it go I would see it being very tight. Uh because for all of you know, obviously Johnny will get the, the plaudits and so on and you know, he wasn't he wasn't plowing a lone furrow up front either though. No, I mean, no. you know, the likes of Jason Kennedy and um Liam Ford, Irla obviously chipping in. Like that's you know, they're they're four big units for want of a better description. Like so that <laughs> And the thing about having guys like that, it, it allows you, you know, in that case, to play a very direct style, um, you know, which is which we're seeing less and less of, to be fair. But having the scope to to be that bit, bit more direct in your play is is always going to be a, a positive when you have guys like that who can who can win the ball clean. But the point I was going to make, you know, that's without mentioning Keenan Fahey, um, and their backline who were who were really really solid. Now, on the other side of that, then you have Cravel, who have been, you know, they've been a solid senior A team for a number of years. Um, local der- It's a local derby for Cravel as well. So I, I would see Cravel putting a huge amount into this one, uh, have some real quality themselves, like the likes of Tiernan and Lean coming through, um, Tom Onhan, obviously. Uh, you know, they, they'll they fancy getting back on the horse. And, they, like, they push Sarsfields for long periods as well. Um, it, 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 that's a really tough one to call to be honest with you yeah that's the um, final game in uh, group 4 just one prediction on that um, Liam how do you see it going I'm going to go there Dan you have to stick with it now anyway absolutely even without Johnny thank you Franny <laughs> <laughs> just just then a brief look at uh, Senior Real as I'll just call out a couple of pictures here Hasker I like to go Camogie training come on <laughs> <laughs> just there, uh, Hashcraft play Molya, Lee Meadows, Athan Rai, uh, Kilnadima, Climber, and Beth uh, Pierces. Uh, the game of the weekend there really is um, Lee, Lee Meadows and Athan Rai, um, because whoever loses would have lost two out of the three games they're going to have in this group. I know it's it's hard to believe, like, Meadows was county champions in when was it 2015? No, 17. 17, sorry. Mm. And at the Nori, like, what a powerhouse. Um, it's, it's hard to believe, you know, mm. one of these is going to have two defeats. So, it, uh, it's like you're on about a draw earlier on. Where's the draw going to be? This mm. this could have a, a draw written all over it. And Keen Burke getting sent off the last day. Was that two yellows? Or was there a straight red for at the Nori? I, I think, oh, hang on I'm not sure. I won't commit to that now because I'm not certain. Yeah, that'll have a huge sure. bearing. That would that would be huge. Yeah, I never considered that because when you yeah. go through the Mellows team sheet, like it's there's still a lot of really solid lads there right throughout. Like going back to their county final winning team, the, you know, a lot of the same guys. Ryan right, Ryan O'Dwyer's gone from there now. Obviously, it probably mm. hasn't helped things when you get into that and mm. have your manager and yeah, obviously being a. But sometimes then, think. like that, you know, they've had a couple of weeks. It, it could galvanise them into, into I was, a, a big performance. And, and you're talking about a, a team with a lot of experience there. Um, I think Athen Rye will be stung from that first round defeat, to be honest. Um, it, it's, it, it's, it's hard to believe that you're, you're, you know, looking at one of these teams that going into round three could be on no points and, and staring down the barrel. That's, that's, the, that's the reality of it. Um, and, you know, would have thought senior B with eight teams in it, but there's there's going to be some serious casualties, and that's that's one you know team there who's going. Now you can still end up qualifying in third place, and you could come through and win the senior B. That's the that's the reality of it. Uh, but it is it's it's a huge game. I, I, another one that's a big game for me is Kalimer and Kilinima Yeah, uh, huge. Game. Again, I'd say there'd be no love lost there either when those two meet. I, I, I'd be hoping from Kilinima Leitrim's point of view, Brian Malai is back on the pitch. Remember when I was with Leitrim, Freddie? How's that? Remember when I was with Leitrim? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> what happened there, Liam? I've been trying <laughs> to forget. Moving on, Paul. I know, yes. If you said it now, you have to go into it. <laughs> Liam, Liam was with Leitrim two years ago um, when they had a phenomenal championship performance. Um, no, yeah, you're right, though. I think, 
like they 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 still got over the line the last year without Brian Malai, who's their who's you know their key player. Um, I'm I I'd be hoping he's back for this for for this one. But they, these are the kind of games that you know Kalimer would have wanted. Like this is what they this is what they toiled to win intermediate for to get up and and play these games. Um, so you can be certain they'll put in a huge effort into it. But I I just think. Kiladima should have enough by way of experience and quality to to see that one out. But uh, I'd be making I imagine it'll be a it'll be a tough enough affair that one now. I'd be making Leitrim favourites to win out senior B because you know they're just for their score and threats alone. Like you've Mikey Lynch, you've mm. you've mm. Colin Malloy, Brian Malloy, you have the Kinneys, you've Tom Tierney still there. Um, you know, they, like they're capable, of, they're capable of chalking up 21, 22. They are absolutely yeah. points every game, yeah. like so. Yeah. Um, you know, Adam Nolan at the back. Um, I, I, I'd make them to favourites for senior B. Obviously, Climber. Um, that's them still jinx now, on you. Huh? That's, that's the jinx. jinx yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I really admire Climber. Like, they're, they're they've come up out of intermediate and they're playing with such aggression, such commitment. Um, like. You, you nearly know the level you're going to get from them every time they take the pitch, like which which makes them really hard to beat. Um, you know they have a good bit of uh, youth and experience as well. Like you've Kevin Hanny there, you've Liam Fahey, you've um, Andrew Carey still there. Uh, it, it will be. It's not. I, I know I'm I'm talking up Leitrim and Ledema, but I do think that'll be really a really tight game in the weekend. I think so. Yeah. I think so. And the funny thing for me on the senior B, and we talked about Athen Rye and and Mellows there. To my mind in the senior B, and I said, I'm probably contradicting myself a little bit on this. I think in the senior A, if, you, if, you, if you're aspiring to win it, I think you need to go direct to the, the quarterfinal. Um, to my mind, in, in the senior B, that is not the case. You could actually finish third in your senior B group. Yeah. If you get to a quarterfinal where you cross play. If you finish first in your group, you're getting, you get to a semifinal. But I, I, to my mind, those teams... On any given day, most of them could beat one another. And I think with the senior B, it'll be all about getting momentum at the right time. So you could scrape yeah. into third place in senior B and you could have every chance of winning the thing out because you could just get momentum at the right time. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that all is lost for, for you know, teams who last round one, like like Athen Rye and Meadows. Yes, it's a big weekend for them. But I think for the moment for those teams, it's more about just hanging on in there trying to get the qualification and then having a real cut at it when it comes to the business end. Just just then finally that um just on the intermediate lean, is is a team the team that have stood out for you like everyone because anyone that's been on the podcast so far has just been talking about I suppose how impressive they were against Kinvara opening day out. Ah uh, yeah definitely um yeah, they were probably a bit unlucky to go down, so um, they'll obviously be stung by that. And you know, they're they'll they'll have a, they, they should have a they should have a huge say in this. Yeah, definitely. Is it? And again, you go through their team sheet. There's loads of quality there. Uh, yeah. They probably over the last two years in senior, I think it's it's not you know you're 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 not being unfair to say that they they struggled, but. Sometimes, and I mentioned earlier on, like in, in relation to Casagar, sometimes all you lack is that little bit of confidence. And I think a, a team like Tina Abinari, who, who had struggled for a couple of years in senior, ultimately would have been very, very disappointed to go down, um, you know, with, with the players that they have. And it's, I suppose, I'm trying to think now, it's probably 10 years ago, maybe a little bit more at this stage since, since they won a minor, uh, minor A. With Park Brehany and Shane Maloney and these lads, um, but they'd be very disappointed with that. But you know, even looking at their team sheet now, Paul Killeen back for them is a huge plus. Uh, Matty going in to 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 reorganise things and give that fresh imp- Matty Kenny give that fresh impetus. I think that could be huge for them as well. And um, you know, a lot of really good lads there throughout that team and. Yeah, I, I think that was a statement win in the first round against Kimbara because Kimbara are one of the teams that you'd be saying, well, they'd be, they should be there, thereabouts. Um, and it was probably a statement victory. And if they can keep that kind of form, then right now you'd say they're the team to beat. But looking down the line, you know, could you be looking at Tina Visionary, 
versus Kilodema Leitrim, local derby later on down the line. That'd be that'd be a massive one. Will be. Sorry, I'm cross wires, crossing two championships yes. there. I'm, I think you're looking. I'm showing my right. age there. I'm showing my age. Apologies. <laughs> um. Yeah, but yeah, Tina Benari definitely one of the teams that are that are. Um, you'd say right now they're probably favourites, but they've put themselves in that position. You'd like to see um, Rahun having a good rattle at it as well. I know they got the semi final last year, but they're uh, they're putting huge work in as well at underage level, and um, you know I, I I'd love to see them have a good run at the intermediate. Yeah, Mila Gaelcourt are probably another team as well that's just back to yeah. back after um, last year. A full round of games as well uh, in the intermediate as well as the senior, a senior B. But that's all we have time for on today's show. Thanks a million to the lads for jumping on. Sound